Hey guys, welcome back. Fred here at Math Engineering. Let's do a video on two-way punching shear. So now we're getting into, you know, some topics in concrete that are kind of really related to civil engineering, okay? And this is uh, this is one of them. Um, so uh, if you take a look on the left here, um, we have we're given this uh, this layout of columns, okay? And we have a slab with some columns, and we have some dimensions, and it's a flat plate, okay? And we're asked to design the slab for two-way shear at column two B, and we're going to disregard the effect of the unbalanced moment transfer. Um, we'll, we'll do another video on that, but it's it's really long, so we're going to have to do that in two parts. So first, we're just going to do the two-way punching shear. Okay, so what is two-way shear? So two-way shear, otherwise known as punching shear, okay, if you take a look at the screen, you'll see this graphic here. And as we can see, um, how two-way shear happens is this area, this critical area around the column, actually punches through the slab and separates from the slab. And, and you can see these diagonal flexural cracks uh, are formed. And um, so essentially, yeah, two-way shear is a mechanism that it results in failure along the surface of a, a truncated pyramid. Okay, so it kind of looks like a, a cone around the column. That's, that's the method that it fails. And, uh, and we test that at a perimeter around the column of uh, what's called B-naught, but we're going to get to that. Okay, um, typically, um, this failure takes place uh, when there's excessive gravity loads transmitted from the slab into the supporting columns. Okay, so the area around the column is, is too heavy and it just uh, falls right through and the column around, around the area around the column is unable to resist it. So um, let's take a look at how to solve this problem and we're going to do it actually using that kind of the Canadian code standards, but I'm sure uh, the concept is the same in your country, they just might be slightly different values. So. Okay, so first what we're going to need to do, okay, is we're going to need to find our critical area, okay? So in one-way shear, the critical area was kind of just in one direction, but this one's in two. So what we're going to do, say this is our column here, and we have 600 by 300 column. Okay, so we're going to take a look at just column B, 2B here, this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw our critical area. I'm going to draw that as a dotted line. Okay, around the column. Okay, now the dimensions of this this critical area, okay, is simply this side, each side of the column that it's on, plus D. Okay, so D is given the effective depth of 140 millimeters. Okay, so this distance here, okay, is D over two. This is 300, and this is D over two. Likewise, on this side, we have 600. This is D over two, and that's D over two here. Okay. So that's our critical area. Now we need to go over here and we need to find the tributary area. So that's like the the force that's pushing down that's gonna separate this uh, area around the column from the rest of the slab. Okay, so let's draw that. Okay, and what is this area here? Well, this dimension is simply half of the area between the columns here. So half of the distance between the columns. So we have five and we have six here. Okay, so this is gonna be 2.5 on this side and three on this side. Okay, and then we have over here, this is just 4.8, so you have 2.4 and 2.4 here. Okay, so this is going to be 5.5 meters, and this is going to be 4.8 meters. So the tri the our tributary area, and I'm going to highlight that here. So this line that I, this area that I've shaded in, that's the tributary area. Okay, so uh, whatever is acting on here, okay, which is actually our WF that's given in this question. So we're given the factored load, which is nice. It's going to be WF times the area of this tributary area. That's going to give us the load that's uh, contributing to the punching shear. So whatever's outside of our critical area, but within our tributary area. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's calculate this area A here. Okay. Well, now this area A is going to be 5.5 times 4.8. That's the whole thing. We're going to have to subtract this inside area here. So uh, what do we have here? Well, D, we have our D is 140. So we're going to have 600 plus D, right? So that's 740. And that is going to be times this d uh, distance here, okay? Which is just going to be 300 plus 140, that's 440. Okay, and if we go ahead and calculate A, so the area of the tributary region. Okay. We're going to get that we have an area of 26 0.1 meters squared. And if we want to get the force, so the shear force V, okay, that's acting on this area here, uh, we can go ahead and find that by multiplying the area times the factored load. Okay, and we're going to get that VF is 329 kilonewton. Cool. So now what we're going to do 
is we're going to turn this into the factored shear stress, okay? And then we're going to compare it to the limits in the code. Okay, so how we convert this to the factored shear stress, we're going to call that VF, so small VF. That's going to be VF, okay, over B0 times D. Okay, Pretty straightforward. What is B0 here? B0 is the perimeter of the critical region here, okay? So our B0, let's just solve for it down here, is simply going to be, we have this dimension here, which is 740 times 2, because we have two of them, plus 440 times 2. Okay, so our B0 is simply 2,360 millimeters. Okay, we have our D and we have our V, so let's go ahead and plug it in. Okay, so let's find it in terms of MPA. This is kilonewton, we want newton. Okay, let's plug in our B0 and our D in millimeters. Okay, this is going to give us a factored shear stress of 0 0.96 MPA. Okay, so if you remember from you know other concrete, other basic stuff, um, when we're calculating, we're, we're checking shear. Okay, VF must be less than VC. Okay, so um, VC here is the factored shear resistance of the concrete, and this is the factored shear stress contributing to two-way shear. So um, what is VC here? What is VC? Well, there's three formulas in the Canadian code that need to be satisfied. We need to check for all of them and then find the smallest one, and then we need to compare VF to that. So VC in the Canadian code, okay, equals the minimum of So for the first one, we have 0.19 lambda uh, phi c root f prime c times 1 plus 2 beta c. Um, that is uh, due to the effect of the column shape. Okay, And now we can take a look at the second one, which is going to be... Okay, so the second equation here, that's due to the effect of the column location within the building. Okay, And um, as you can see, we have a B naught on the denominator here. So when this critical area gets rather large, the column's big. This one doesn't usually govern. But And then finally, we just have the, we have the shear strength of uh, plain concrete. And since we, uh, we have normal density concrete, we can just say that it's 0.25 F prime C. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and let's take a look, see what we got here. So let's calculate the first one here. Okay, so let's calculate that. And we're going to take the minimum of these and we're going to compare it to VF. So we have 0 0.19, lambda is 1 for plain uh, normal density concrete, f prime c is 0 0.65, uh, f prime c is 30, and then we have 1 plus 2 over beta c. Now what's beta c? Well, beta c is simply the longer side of the column divided by the shorter side. So the ratio of the longer side of the column over the shorter side, that's equal to 2. Okay, so we have 2 divided by 2. All right, and that's simply going to give us 1.35 MPA. Good, let's check the second equation here. So we're going to go for this one now. What's uh, Alpha S is a factor that we're going to use depending on where the uh, column is located. Okay, so because we have an uh, interior column, okay, we're going to use 4. Um, if we're going to use Phi S is 4 for interior column. Okay, for an edge column, it's 3, and for a corner column, it's 2. But uh, that's just, uh, for now, we know that it's 4. That's also in the code, so if you need it, you can go check it out. Okay, so we have phi s, which is 4 in this case. Our d is 140 millimeters. Our b naught is 2360 plus 0 0.19. And that's all times lambda, which is 1, phi c, which is 0 0.65, and we have root 30. Okay, and that's simply going to be equal to Go ahead and calculate that out. We're going to get 1.52 MPA. Number three is fairly straightforward. And we're going to get that that is 1.37. Okay, so what do we do? What is our strength of concrete? Well, we evaluated the effect of the, uh, we effect of the column shape, uh, the effect of the column location, and we just evaluated the, uh, the factored shear resistance of plain concrete. And we find that actually this governs. This, uh, this first equation here governs. That is our lowest one, so that is going to be our VC. Cool. Now, we're just going to go ahead and compare VC to VF. So we have our VF, uh, our VF here, our factored shear stress is 0 0.96. So we're going to go ahead and compare to uh, our VF to our VC. So our factored shear stress um, on our tributary area here uh, was 0 0.96 MPA, which is less than our strength of concrete, which is 
1.35. That means that this is adequate for two-way shear. So uh, what we didn't consider was the, um, we, we didn't check the shear stress that's created by um, the transfer of unbalanced moments. Okay, so, um, so sometimes in, in two-way slabs, or in pretty much all the time, we have uh, different moments on both sides uh, that we need to design for. Um, that creates kind of an uneven stress distribution, and we would add that to VF. But in this case, we're just doing the simple three checks here, compare to VC, and we're good to go. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching. If you want to see more stuff on shear and uh, the Canadian code, let me know in the comments down below. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and thanks for watching.